continue. The next one, this lady, she it was born in London in 1943. I think she's brave telling. I would never tell my age, but it's okay. That's normal. It's okay. Relocated in Munich in 1968, she, where she has lived ever since. After her divorce in 1983, she felt driven to leave her office job, which she had enjoyed until then, in order to follow her dream of becoming a jazz singer. Wow. Today, after a long and adventurous journey, during which she also became a CD producer, author, coach, and speaker, and founder of the Institute of Charismology, it's her passion to pass on the many life lessons she has learned and to mentor young people who are looking to follow their dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome Naomi Susan Isaacs. We <laughs> love it. Naomi Susan Isaacs, aging joyfully, living your very own life. So there I was, at my desk, in a really well-paid job that I enjoyed, with colleagues that I liked, and a boss who was a boss. <laughs> and I was the happiest divorcee in the land. Out of my cage, out there free again to do whatever I wanted to do. And what did I want to do? Hmm. That was the question. Going to work in the morning? Yeah, fine, okay. Home at night? Hmm. No one to cook for. Read a book? Hmm. Watch television? Oh. Go for a walk, go to a bar, meet people. Uh. <laughs> and while I was mulling through all these thoughts, a memory from my childhood came back to me. And I remembered in my room, I would stand in front of an enormous mirror and gesticulate dramatically and with a pretend microphone in my hand, I would sing. Jazz. Summertime and the living is easy. And while I was thinking of that again, this dream filled me with excitement and with a feeling that was that who I was? Is that who I should have been all along? And what will happen if I don't do it? And is it too late? I'm 42, going on 43. And, and if I don't do it now, when can I do it? And what happens when I get old? And I have to look in the mirror and I have to face myself, and I have to say, you didn't even try. Could I live with that? How would I feel dying with my song still inside me? So, I did something that everybody else thought was really courageous. I took a year off. I awarded myself a sabbatical year, one year, to do nothing but concentrate on music. Take singing lessons again, go to the jazz clubs, meet the jazz musicians, get to know how to sing on stage with them, how to sit in at jam sessions, and I even 
went on the road with some quite well-known bands. I didn't sing with them. I was the lady with the car. <laughs> you have to do something to earn your keep. And at the end of one year, I was a jazz singer. I had done a small tour of Germany, sometimes sleeping in the back of my car in a car park, once sleeping in a really damp attic with only cold water and not a cup of coffee in sight. But I was happy. I was living the jazz life. Was I successful? Hmm. Financially not. But luckily, people had started asking me whether I would teach them. And so, I had to say, yes, I needed the money. And what happened was, I discovered my real passion, quite by chance and necessity. And today, I am one of the happiest people that I know. And that's because I know that when I get really old and it's time for me to pass on, I can face myself in the mirror and I can say to myself, you gave it your best shot. You did it. You had a go.